Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a wind restrictor in a C5 Corvette Coupe. Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is my new 2016 Corvette and you're watching the Corvette channel. So before I get started, let me tell you a little bit about wind restrictor. Wind Restrictor is based out of Dallas, Texas, and they do all of their fabrication and their manufacturing there at their plant in Dallas. They also offer 24-7 support via a web session through their website. So if you run into a problem after reading the instructions and watching this video, you can feel free to reach out to them and start a chat and they'll be able to help you. During regular business hours, they'll be able to help you also, but during the, the after hours, there is someone that you can still reach out to. Now, the product has a lifetime guarantee, and you're not going to be able to beat that. I mean, it's, it's, it just gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling that you know darn well that everything is going to be okay. And if you run into a problem, they'll take care of you. Just reach out to them, give them a call, let them know that you're having a problem, and they will help you. So, um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like in the finished product here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into this video now. We're going to show you exactly how to install it in a C5 Corvette. Now, let me tell you about the, the product just a little bit. The, the product is a genuine licensed product from GM. And they offer a whole bunch of different emblems and logos that you can put on it. Or, you can, or they can help you make a custom one. They not only make them for the Corvettes, but they make them for other brands also. Uh, Chevrolet, Ford, uh, Mercedes, a whole bunch. So uh, check out their site. I'm sure that you'll really love what you see. So inside the kit, as well as the wind restrictor and all of the brackets and all that type of stuff, they have the four page, five step instruction manual as well as if you've elected to get the uh, LCD multi-light kit, it will come with a separate wiring instruction sheet that shows exactly what wire to put onto the actual computer brain for the lighting kit. Um, if you did not do that, elect to get that lighting kit, you will not need that, um, that wiring, uh, wiring schematic and you probably did not get this in your box. Otherwise, you're just going to have follow these instructions Follow my video, you're not going to have absolutely any issues at all. So before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and show you all the parts that you could possibly have with the, with the kit here. Um, if you elected to get the wind restrictor as a single color light, you would be getting the wind restrictor itself. And then you would be getting the connector wire right there that's attached to it as well as uh, just the main wire right there, this, this one right here, just that goes straight to wherever, however you're going to uh, hook it up, whether you're going to be hooking it up as a third brake light or if you're going to be hooking up as a, as a um, uh, on all the time or a keyed switch, it would just be directly, you know, or, you know, straight to the battery, however you're doing it. Um, in this case, we're doing the uh, multicolor uh, with the remote uh, system on this one, which you would be getting this controller right here, as well as the remote for it. And then you get, you'll have both connections here where this actually is a, a quick disconnect. And uh, you can see right here, you've got this wire goes all the way up to the front of the car where it gets its power, and then it has a plug-in and then this is connected to the brain of the uh, um, of the multi-light kit. Um, and in this, we're also going to be doing a, a an auxiliary battery. So you, if you're at a car show or something like that, and you don't want to have your key on, you don't want to run your battery down. This way, you can actually just run off of this battery, and you get. This right here, this is a, uh, it comes with the, the stick, two-sided stick tape with the Velcro, and it has an on and off switch and the same plug that matches up. So this little guy here, which would normally be coming from the uh, wind restrictor, you can now plug it in, into your car connection, or you can plug it into your battery connection, and then that way you could be at a car show for 
10 12 hours if you wanted to and um, and you'd have plenty of power to run it so it also comes with the alcohol pads you're going to need to wipe everything down before you just you go ahead and you uh, use the, uh, the stick tape for the brackets as well as the wire tap to be able to tap into the there's a brown wire on the C5 that's up under the dash and we'll be showing you in that video that we, how we attach to that and so you'll be able to tap into that wire also comes with the uh, white gloves uh, so you can hold the the restrictor without getting your fingerprints all over it and then it also comes with a free sample of the Brilliant Eyes which is something that you want to use it also comes with a wiping cloth you do only want to wipe it down with this Brilliant Eyes you don't want to use Windex or anything like that it's too abrasive and it will actually scratch the uh, the restrictor itself the restrictor, the restrictor comes with a lifetime guarantee on it, but if you use Windex or something like that, you just voided your warranty because it, uh, it is too abrasive and it will scratch it. So um, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the video and we'll go from there. So the first step that we're going to do here is we've got a center mark uh, right here the, of the uh, template itself and we have a center mark right here on the plastic that we're going to need to attach to. So we're going to actually line those two up. We've just pulled the, the sticky tape off and we're just going to line those up like so. Right, right in here. There you go. Okay. You got your side? Yep, right. It's like so. So now that we've got that going, that's where the bracket's going to go how uh, Terry's holding it there and it's going to end up going like this right over here. Now what we have to do here is that we've got to take the the uh, app, the application the, the primer which is a uh, adhesive promoter and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop that there's a little black dot here and you're going to pop that and you'll hear it, it sounds like it cracks it's like so okay you squeeze that around a little bit and then it will actually fill the the fabric that's in the end of it here and we're just going to holding it down so it'll fill up and then he's going to go ahead and Terry's just going to paint that on there. Now this will dry clear so you don't have to worry about it but you want to make sure that this uh, that this stuff actually gets all over where it belongs um, so you you make sure that it will be totally covered and then what you can do is you can go ahead and the brackets themselves, they have a um, very, uh, I don't know what they call it, it's a very high density uh, adhesive. And so it's heat sensitive, so you would, you'll go ahead and you'll pull the sticker back, and then you're going to go ahead and use the hair dryer to heat that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the hair dryer in. And you can use a heat gun if you need to, but this doesn't take very long to do. So. I'm just going to run this for about 15 to you know, 30 seconds or so. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to push it right up against where this, where this bracket is. Right there. Okay. And then you want to press and, and hold, hold this for 90 seconds. And okay. you want to have a good firm grip on it, pinching it down. And then once these are set, then there's a, a secondary hole that we... The, uh, the kit comes with two self-tapping screws and you'll go ahead and you'll use that's a 3 8 head on those and you'll drive those up through the back of the bracket over here in the back and you'll see that how we do that here in just a second. Um, that is an option to do but I highly recommend that you do that and we're going to be doing it on this one. Um, there's a lot of weight that's being held on this adhesive and so in the hotter climate areas, the adhesive will, uh, with all this weight hanging, will eventually give way. So this is a new design, um, and um, I think it was well well thought thought up, and it should work just fine. Um, we haven't had any since we've done this that we've had any problems with them, so it should be fine. Um, it, in, in case you guys are worried about the fact that you're having to drill a hole into the plastic, not really a big deal. It's a fairly small hole in the first place, but in the event that you decide you're ever going to take the wind restrictor out, you don't want to use it anymore for whatever reason, 
um, and you want to fill that hole, you can use a small rivet gun, uh, just a small rivet, and you know, and that'll just fill the hole. And then no one will even be the wiser that you actually had something there. And then you're just going to hold it in place again for the 90 seconds. So once we get to the next point here, once Terry's done with that, um, we'll be able to climb into the back of the back behind the seats, and we'll be able to put the uh, screw up into the back of the bracket there. That's all it is. They're self-tapping, so you don't have to worry about drilling holes or any of that kind of stuff. They just screw right up in there. And you I think I can get both of them from this side. <laughs> I got it. Um, now the other thing is, guys, that um, you don't want to overdrive that screw in there. Um, as soon as he goes through, he stops it because he doesn't want to over tighten it. Okay. That's all. That's, that's all you need, and that's all there is. So at this point, that part is done. Now we can take this template off. We don't need it anymore, right? There we go. Get fingers off of that's it. That's it. So, so now once you've got that up there, you can see here that that just screws right in. They have these little plastic plates that kind of sandwich this in here, which works really nice. All right. So that right there, guys, was as simple as it can get as far as you just, you don't want to over tighten these, you just want to snug them up, okay? Now, at that point, this thing is installed as far as the brackets are concerned. You saw how easy that was to install. Um, this part was probably the easiest installation I think I've ever done on, on a, uh, a wind restrictor. Um, so now, basically all we're going to do is we're going to take this wire that Terry's got there, we're going to tuck it up inside right there like he's doing. He's tucking it up inside the trim and it's going to go down that whole side and over down into the speaker housing. As you can see the trim right here, if you just take this little plastic thing that'll push the wire in there, until you get down to in here somewhere. Okay, see what I've done is I just moved this out with this tool and just kind of keep tucking it down inside there. It'll fall down inside there. So whatever you guys do, do not force it. Just take your time and finesse it all the way around and it will go, it'll tuck all the way in, not a problem. It's just if you get, you know, you get in there and you start trying to he-man it, it's gonna end you just, up, you're gonna yeah. screw up the wirings. And we're just gonna bring this right around. There you go. See? Get, once you get it in under here, once you get it right under this part, you can see it sticking out a little bit back here, but you can just take and pull it gently and kind of push it back there and it'll slide right down and you will never see these wires. And then you just kind of, kind of work it all the way around. I like it because it's got that flat wire instead of a round wire and it just slides right in. All of this stuff will just slide right around. There you go. Now that all this is all done and in here and you'll never even know it's there. Now I'm gonna lift the carpet out and go behind the carpet. Right here. This here, this up. And you can pull this carpet out a little bit. It tucks in again real easy. Just enough to get the wire behind it, like so. And once you get it in here, just tuck it right behind this thing. Now you just put this back and tuck it in. Now your wires are in place. And under here is where we're gonna put all the equipment. We're gonna put it all in here with Velcro and sticky tape. And all the wires, you have enough wire, everything, there's, everything will go right here. Then from that point, once we finish that, then we're gonna run the wires that go up to the front so you can get into the power. I would like to thank Steven over at Wind Restrictor for sponsoring this episode of the Corvette Channel. The next step, guys, after we've got the wiring uh, back to the back part of the, uh, the car behind the seat, um, there is a separate uh, wiring kit. If you're using the multi-light assembly, multi-light kit. There is a uh, wiring diagram to show you how the four wires that you would have uh, is going to plug into the LCD controller. Now if you have elected to just get the single light model, which most people do, 
um, you won't have to worry about this. You'll just be plugging directly into the next step that we'll be doing, which is just plugging into the power source. And so we're just tying these up. We're making sure that these are nice and nice and snug. And once we've got that part taken care of, then we can move on to the little pigtail that's going to uh, allow us to be able to go from the battery to the car for power, which is this little guy right here. Okay. And you, all you have here is a positive and a negative. Your positive is going to be the center pin. The, the center wire is, is a white wire, which is your positive. And the, the um, wire that's acting as the shielding, I believe is in, encapsulated in a black wire. So there we go. Once we've got our wires all hooked up here, we can actually cheat a little bit. and We can test this before we ever get started. A lot, if you don't have the battery pack, you don't, you're gonna have to wait until you get completely plugged into the car before you're gonna be able to know that this all works. And in this case, what we're gonna do, since we have our brain, it's all wired up, we've got our plug-in, we've got our battery, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug in the battery. Just like so. We're gonna turn the battery on. You're gonna see the light light up. You can see that our controller came on. Hopefully you can see those, those lights on there. Then what we do is we take our, our remote control and we're just going to go ahead and hit the remote. And I can see right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lot of light right here now, but it's lighting up no problem. So, um, that help you any? yeah, there we go. You can see a little bit more purple now. You can see that. So it's, it does work. So we're in good shape. So now all we're going to need to do is we're going to just wire the wire up to the front of the car, get it tied in, and then this way, this little guy right here can plug into that harness and then we can run off of the car battery. Okay, we got the seat moved back so we can pick this. If this here, just pick up here and it's got little clips and you pop it out. Once you get that one out, you just kind of work it forward until you get to the next one and they pop out very easy. Lift it up like so and out she comes. Now we're going to take this off, which has got two screws in it. Okay, we got the, the two screws underneath here in this tan piece. And then these here, it's just a sensor back here, and they just pop off. Like so. Then they're over here on this side. You pop your trunk lid and your parking lights. I think that's what that is. Mm -hmm. And these here, you pop this out like so and unplug it. Now, there's a screw right back here. Right back here. That happens to be a T15 forks. Okay. There we go, that one. And then you come over here and there's another one right where you took this sensor plate off. And you take it out. And then it should just snap out and down. And so we're gonna use a self-tapping screw to put the ground into this. Okay, right now I'm gonna put one of these ends on here. They don't come with this, but I wanna put this on. It'll make a better connection. I'm just gonna set it in here. Get it through where we can get a good start. I look so it just barely comes through there because you're gonna crimp right into it. Then we'll crimp this thing. That way it's a ground wire. I'm gonna take this self-tapping so screw, which will go in there, I'm gonna screw it right into here. Just through here. Now we're making it, we're taking the easy route by using a self-tapping screw. Um, if you wanted to use, uh, I think in the instructions it says that you can obtain a ground by uh, using the back screw or the back bolt that holds the seat down to the car. 
um, or you can you know get into other other grounds um, if you know where a good ground is on the car you can go ahead and use that it doesn't matter where you get it we just uh, grabbed it off of a very easy place to get it now this here's a little it comes with that we're just going to put this around this little brown wire right here this dark brown wire which is the headlights so that when you turn the headlights on that'll come on right you don't need it in the daytime right so the headlights and the running lights so right. once you go into the running light position the light the the system will energize this way and, okay now i got that one now i stick this guy in all the way Give me this and now we should have a connection that's good that's good that's good close this up so it doesn't ground out anything Okay, now, what I would like to do is check it just before we go any further to make sure that we've got good connections by taking these two and plugging them together. Yeah, there we go. And we've got power. We've got power, everything's good. Okay, now all we have to do is start putting it all back together. Now we're gonna connect it. I'm gonna feed this in just right behind this wire that comes through the door panel right here. Like so. We can take this and run it up into here and out of the way. Now this here can just simply sit right down inside the carpet, right just like that. All the way back. Till we get back here. Run this back and we'll put all the dash back together. Now we'll just commence to putting this back under there. Okay, now we're putting the screws back in in the bottom to hold the dash up. Right. Now we're just going to slide this back in place. Okay. All right, we put the sensor cover on on the other side. Now the last thing to do is just put the switch back in that controls the trunk and it just slides back together. Like so, it snaps in. Just tuck <laughs> this underneath here. Like so, and there we are. Again, this excess you can do however you'd want to do if you wanted to tuck it in from the the front side of the uh, of the dash or you could tuck it under the carpet um, <clears throat> Terry just wanted to be able to have that excess wires tuck it all back in. And you've got carpet <clears throat> all the way up here yeah. there, go. there we go, there we go. that's gonna go down like that That's all in, that's all in, and basically, there you go. Now we'll move the seat back. Linda's a little short one, so it won't bother her at all. But we'll see if we can get the seat back without running into anything, which I'm sure you can. Oh yeah, it has plenty of room, as you can see. You can see right there, he's going all the way back and it's not gonna touch. Take so a look at that. So you got plenty of room. You don't lose any space that way. All right, so that should end this job. Perfect. So to get started, after we've got everything wired in, we notice that the, the wind restrictor itself is off. Now, when we wired it in and I showed you how to get to the brown wire, it's actually tying it into the running lights. So um, when you have your headlights or your running lights on, it's going to supply power uh, to the to the brain for the uh, wind restrictor to turn on and then you would be able to control it from the remote. Now the one nice thing about this is that the remote remembers what its last state was. So if you had it on and you had it doing whatever, whatever color it was set to, when you go to turn the running lights on, it's going to go back and resume what it was doing. You're not going to have to reprogram it. 
So um, I'm just going to reach over and I'm going to, don't have to start the car, nothing like that. I'm just going to literally just reach in and turn the running lights on. So as you can see right here, the, the wind restrictor comes on. I didn't have to do anything with the remote. You can see that I have it in a demo mode here. So I can go and I can adjust it to whatever I want. I can just hit the, the dial. Anytime I hit anything on the dial here, it just goes to whatever setting I have it set to. And so it will remember that the next time we shut it off and we turn it back on. So if you shut it off now, before you shut the system off, when it comes back on, the, the restrictor will not come back on. So you want to make sure that uh, when you turn it on, uh, you know, to hit the button on the remote, and otherwise you're going to go, wait a minute, something's broken. So just keep that in mind when you do it. I, on mine, I, what I do is I go ahead and I just leave it on. And when, when I turn my lights on, the system just comes on. So anyway, we're going to be moving on to the actual instructions on how to uh, control the unit now that we've got power to it and we're in this mode here. And I'm going to show you how to have it go into demo mode, how to make it change colors and all that type of stuff. So if you've elected to buy the multi-light kit, then you will have received a remote control like this, as well as the brain that we showed wiring it into the car. And so I'm just going to go over basic operating instructions. So you can see that it's on right now. To be able to shut it off, you would just hit the off button, like so. And then you would turn, to turn it back on, you just press the, the one or the I letter, okay? And then you can move your finger around the dial here and you can change the color of the lights. So if you want like a more of a yellow or a bluish color or a purple or a red, however you want, you can move it right over to that area and touch it or you can dial all the way around. The other thing that you can do, there's an intensity light. This right here at the bottom is the lower intensity. You can lower the, the light itself down by tapping it. You can see it's getting dimmer. And you can also hit it back up to bring it back up to a higher intensity. Okay. There's also two program lights and or buttons in here that makes it do different things. You can have it fade in and out. You can have it do a strobing. So you just by pushing this button, you can see that it's gonna it's going to start changing colors here in a second. So it's changing different programs and it comes in the box and what it's going to do and you can see right there that it's going through a little little demo mode there showing the different colors and that's just changing it very fast. You can go into this button here and it will do other functions also. So just go through it, play with it and you'll be able to see that this just got so many different options you can do and it just looks really, really cool. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys found that this video was helpful and informative and that it helps you when it comes time that you want to put your wind restrictor in your C5 Corvette. If you follow the instructions that they gave you in the box and you follow my video, you're not going to have absolutely any problem. But remember, they do have 24-hour support via the chat session. So if you have any questions, you have a problem, feel free to reach out to them. So again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.